Hi everyone, my name is Violent Saber and this is my partner in crime. Hey. And um, we, we decided to do something a little bit different and um, I hope you'll we'll bear with us as we um, we'll show you. Um, we sort of decided to, to build like a more sort of full-on full -on game and although we spent a reasonable amount of time doing it, um, because we didn't really achieve all the, all the various things we wanted to do. So today is a basically simple demo and um, we'll, we'll show you, you know, the, the game in action. And then, you know, if you want to leave, you can go. And then, um, because it's sort of a full game engine, for those of you that are interested, that want to stay behind to hear a bit more of the nitty-gritty, um, you're most welcome to stay. And, and you can come and have a, have a, have a go on the, on the game as well, if you, if you wish. So, um, it's called, you know, DS, as you can imagine. And if we load up the release compile, then we get DS powered by its extremely hardcore engine. We like to use recursive acronyms. Okay, so um, I'll explain a couple of the things we've got here. Use this. Um, this is the profiler graph, and this is especially useful for us when we're doing debugging because the various colors represent what's actually happening in the game loop. So the gray is, is miscellaneous stuff that we really don't know what it is. Um, and the, the, this green stuff is how long it's taking to render the user interface. Now, the user interface sits on top of all the 3D stuff, um, so that's the green. Now, that thing up the top there, that's actually the timing system, the time display. Now, the top thing is real time. Um, the next thing is the time stretch. Now, as soon as I take the time stretch, you might think of bullet time, and we have bullet time. So, the next thing there is the virtual time, and that starts with the game, which is controlled by the time stretch. The next thing is the frames per second. It's unoptimized, so it's not going through the roof. And the next thing is the time and lateness, and that's just of the system. So, if we bring the console down, we get a pretty console. And then it's got auto completion, like in your bash shell. So if you hit tab, then it shows all the various things you can do. Now, if you go into view, say, type B, and you can auto complete that, and again, tab it again and again, and you can go active view, and then you can, it's a proxy variable, so you can do that. Now, this is actually a system that we created called dynamic config, and I'll discuss that at the end. But um, let's load up the level now. No, that, that, that's, that's perfectly fine. So this is this is a very basic level. Um, it's loading up now, and this is our thing. Now this is red here, which means that it's the renderer is running, which is a 3D world. Now this is a little terrain we made, and this is a little jeep we borrowed. These <laughs> lines here, these are, this is actually the um, the debug information for the controllers. Now it, there are entities, and each entity has a controller. I'll discuss that later for those of you who are keen to listen to about that. And then the little blue things are like the velocity vectors and the green things are the, the rotational vectors. This is the center of the map. And if you look around with the mouse, you can see that it's a skybox. So it's a complete skybox. And now we're in free camera mode, so what you can actually do is, is move around the scene with, with free camera. Now, we actually got several different types of cameras and several instantiations of each camera. So you can actually do transitions um, by pressing the button keys with the predefined cameras. Now, obviously, these are just numbers we chucked in, and um, it does lose transitions between them. Now, there are the three cameras where you can move around, target cameras that look at the actual object, and you've got the, um, the follow, which is this one. You can zoom in, move the mouse around, and you can see around the object. And that's the gene. So Zoom out just a little bit. That, that's underneath if you want to get a view from underneath. Okay, and then um, we'll start playing the game. Now, uh, we had extreme issues with the physics engine, so, <laughs> so it may not look totally realistic, and Hung um, will discuss that a little later on. Um, so, as you can, this is um, the input bindings, and I'm not quite sure why that popped up. Okay, <laughs> press F1 instead of F1. Put my left on the way up. And then, I think it screwed up. <laughs> but you know, this is in version 1.0, so it's it's all right. If we load it up again, then go and then and then and do some more time. So if we, if we, if we find a nice skill. Yeah, this is um, 
we haven't actually slept for like 48 hours and we were doing this thing like literally before we came here. So you can imagine that it's not quite perfect. It's a bit of an understatement. Um, yeah, so I think that's sort of our main feature list. Um, I mean, we're using a couple of GL extensions compiled by text arrays to make the rendering a whole lot faster. Um, we've got a special mesh exporter that plugs into 3D Studio Max and you, you dump meshes out from that and converts it to a, a file format the game can load. Um, and there are physics controllers, static controllers. In, we're, in future, we're planning for a lot more things because it's very easy to extend um, the infrastructure. Like, you can do all sorts of cool effects with pixel shaders and vertex shaders. Obviously, we didn't have time to do that, but it's quite simple to extend that. Something we'll, we'll be looking at in the future. Now, this is more a physics simulation, this next one. This is just demonstrating the physics engine and the collisions. So you can see that the terrain is actually um, different camera. So you can you know, have, a, have a bit of fun. Now load up two players. You can have multiple players just by changing this thing here. I'm not sure whether it'll work because Um, and two players can play on the one computer. Now, um, once you've got two views, you can actually switch the view by doing this. See, that's the active view, now that's the active view. And you can actually control the cameras and the mouse and everything by picking which view you want. <laughs> Drops off. And this blue thing here, that's the physics engine. So it's not actually taking up too much time. But if you've got a nice, if, if you, your graphics card can, um, um, determines how big your, your grid is. If it hits the top of that grey bar, that means you're going below 60 frames a second, so that means that you're, something's wrong and you probably should get a new graphics card. Or, or a new computer. Or, or the upgrade to uh, version 2.0. Um, I think that's... I can't really think of any, any more obvious things. If we have any questions or anything like that, then feel free to ask now. If not, that brings us to the end. And anybody who wants to stay behind to have a go or um, or to listen to more of the sort of new new features we've packed in, um, please feel free if you do. So thank you very much for watching and your attention. Thank you. Uh, I think you guys are going to get about, I don't know, three out of four for bonus for that. <laughs>